All right. Okay, so uh, can everyone hear my voice? Okay, sure. So I think it's past 10.30 already, so I'll just start the session, this webinar. Okay, all right. So hi, everyone. Uh, and a very good morning. So uh, let me introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Diana, and uh, I will be the, the one who will introduce the latest Smart PLS version, which is called Smart PLS 4. Uh, I will try to have this webinar session for one hour. This is from 10.30 until 11.30. So therefore, I will just go through the basic features and the difference. Maybe I will just give the difference between the latest version and the previous version. Okay. So today we will go through on a, on a software called S, Smart PLS. So basically, what is Smart PLS? Smart PLS is one of the projecting software applications, which is mostly people use to find a partial least square structural equation modeling, which is called as PLSM method. So basically it was developed by Pringle, Wendy and Will in 2005. Okay. Okay, right. Before we start our webinar session, I will introduce my companies, which is called as TechWorks Group. So our mission is to enable government agencies, uh, education institutions, and businesses to make a better decisions based on computational analytics, uh, machine learning, and even artificial intelligence, AI. Okay, so uh, basically our focus is on uh, perceptual intelligence, uh, data science, and analytical solutions. So our HQ office, headquarter office is based in Malaysia, which in um, Petaling Jaya. And we have branches. We have branches in uh, Singapore and Indian as well. Okay, so our key market is focused on government agencies, uh, oil and gas companies, financial engineering, uh, academia, universities, and many more. So we have been in the analytical line for a very long time. So we start with normal statistics and then we evolve to analytics, to machine learning, to data science. And then the latest one is, is uh, to artificial intelligence AI. So we basically, we don't only provide solutions. We also do implementation such as, uh, we do pre-sale support, training, um, demo session, uh, webinar, and also consulting. All right, so these are the list of our technology partner, our solution partner. So uh, basically when we are giving solutions to the customer, we always use different technology partner. So we give solutions um, based on the customer's request on what technology they ask for. Okay, so like today's session, this, this webinar session, this session is on uh, Smart PLS software, which we partner with Smart PLS um, private company. Okay, so basically, uh, we also partner with uh, QSR International for two software, which is called Citavi, which is for reference management software, and NVivo, which is for analysis for qualitative data. So there are also a few other partners such as IHS Market for eViews, which is used for time series analysis, uh, Tipco for software software, Spotfire software, sorry, which is for visualization. And for IBM, we have also two products, which is called, the first one is Cognos Analytics for visualization and SPSS for statistical analysis. Okay. So uh, these are the, our solutions, some of our previous solution customer. We can see here there is 
from Malaysia and also overseas, overseas. So there is from Indonesia, Singapore, Brunei, and even in Philippines itself. So there is like a government and private company all listed in our previous customer. All right, so I think that's all for our introduction for the company. So let's start with the introduction and having some ideas of what uh, Smart PLS software. Okay, so basically what is Smart PLS? A Smart PLS is a, it is a statistical software which um, with a graphical user interface, basically to use for variance-based uh, structure, structural equation model, which is called as SAM, using the partial least square, means that uh, uh, smart PLS is basically used for maybe like researchers or students want to have a partial least square past modeling method, so they can use this smart PLS software. So the, the software was developed by three person, which is called as Winger, Wendy, and Will in 2005. And this, this software has gained popularity since its launch in 2005 itself, not because it is uh, freely available for maybe like uh, lecturers or students, academics and researchers, but it also has a friendly user interface. And the latest one, they focus on the um, reporting features which they add some um, like advanced reporting features. Okay, so Smart PLS can be operated in both Windows and Mac computer because this, the software is programmed in Java platform. Okay, so uh, these are some of the language that Smart PLS can support means that um, you want to run the Smart PLS in a different language. So basically the default, once you download the software, the default language is English. But if you want to have like other language, also you can uh, customize in the software itself. So we can see here, uh, it support uh, language such as English, Malay, there is uh, Japanese, Korean. So these are some of the language that Smart PLS3 support. So in Smart PLS4, there are some additional, I think like 14 other language was added, such as in Chinese. There is a traditional and simplified was added. There is uh, added for Hindi language, for Thai language, for I think or Spanish. Uh, and even like Vietnamese language is also added in the latest one latest version okay so as you can see here there are some of the analysis that smart PLS support means that the the output that it will come out once you run maybe like uh, the plsm method so there is a statistical analysis there is a multivariate analysis there is a structural equation modeling sam and the, of course the partial least square PLS modeling. Okay, so Smart PLS can extract and uh, data set from these file types. Means that it's from, uh, it can extract from Microsoft Excel, IBM SPSS, and text file. In Microsoft Excel, it can read only three data files, which is in .csv, .xlsx, and .xls. In IBM SPSS, of course, it can read from .sav only. And in text file, it can read from .txt. Okay, so basically, uh, before this, in Smart PLS3, you will have your workspace, your indicator, and your canvas all in one interface, right? So in Smart PLS, uh, there is quite a big difference between um, the interface itself. So basically the workspace, it will have their own page. So the indicator and canvas can focus in one page, in, in different page. So we can see here, this is what the interface will come out once you open um, Smart PLS software. So we can see here, there is a two section, which is the left one is called as workspace. 
And the right one is just like a welcome message. And there are some sample projects that they add into the software. So basically, um, you can just play around with the sample projects that are provided by the Smart Palace. And there are a total of 11 sample projects that was given by them. So basically in workspace, uh, you can um, focus only like your projects on your workspace. You can see the whole, uh, what data have you import, what files have you um, create, and what folder have you create also. Okay, so basically um, this is the workspace, se workspace section. And this is the maybe the sample projects. So this is the interface for the workspace. And these are the interface. Uh, once it will open up, once you import the data. Okay, once you import the data and once you um, generate the model, generate the maybe the project, sorry, the project. So basically, before this, like I mentioned just now the workspace, the indicator and canvas in one page, right? So in Smart Palette S4, they separate the workspace between the workspace and the indicator and canvas is uh, in one page. So you can more focus on your project and your canvas is like become more wide and you can adjust the size of your canvas, okay? So the properties also on the right side means that you can um, adjust maybe your color of the model, your border, or your shape. Okay. So I think that is the interface. So I will start um, the demo session. The demo session on the software itself. Is there any questions on the introduction? Okay, so I think there is no question. So if I'm going too fast, you can just um, slow me down or just, um, if you have any question, you can also ask in the chat box or raise your hand. Okay. So if there are any questions or um, on the software, you can just email to sales at Stackworks for sales and tech support at Stackworks for technical support. Okay, so I'll just stop sharing my screen first. Okay, so can everyone see my screen now? Okay, so I'll assume everyone can see my screen. Okay, so this is basically the interface of once you open um, the software. So Ms. Dad, as I mentioned before, there is a workspace um, section and uh, maybe this one is, a, I will be saying that there is a sample project here. So there is a total of 11 sample projects that, that you can um, try to explore. You can just click on this install and it will be automatically added to your workspace here. Like if I click on this first, sample projects. So it will be automatically added to your workspace here. Okay, you can click on the arrow button for you to explore the, this is the sample project or BLS. And this is one, this green icon is for data. It means that there is a two data and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sample model in this example. Okay, you can also try the sample project and view um, once you have the software. Okay, so basically workspace here is for where you want to save 
your project in your device, your computer. So basically, like this one, I save it in um, C files. So you can also switch where you want to save your workspace here by clicking on the switch, and then you can browse where you want to save your data in your computer, in your machine. Okay. All right. So basically, um, the first step, if you open this software is you need to upload or import your data, right? So first thing first is you need to have a folder, a folder for your, for one project, for your project. So um, the first session will be um, how to create a folder of the project. So there is actually a two methods. The first one in, is you can use this uh, files button here. You can create this one, a new project here. For example, this one I use webinar session. You can just click create here. Then there is a new project will be created. A new folder will be created in your workspace that will be saved in your machine. Okay, so once you already create your pro create your the folder of your project, you can just import your data file. Just click on this data file, or if if you don't have this like import data files here, you can just go to files. You can go to import data files here. Okay, or you can just right click on the folder and you can go import data file. Also the same way. Okay, like this example, I have this um, example data, like job set. You can just click open. So this is the only um, data files that Smart PLS can support. You can see it from um, uh, comma separated and SPSS and Microsoft Excel. Okay, then click open. So the, the, the CSV import dialog box will be open up. You can just check which um, files, which variable, which column that you want to import into SPSS. So like this one, um, I want to name it just like what I import it. Or you can change to like example data. Okay, so uh, by default, SPSS assume like um, every empty value as missing. So uh, it will calculate if you have empty value, but like this example, there is zero empty value found. So if you have empty value in your data, you can just write like NA for Smart PLS recognize that NA is a missing value. Okay, like this one, there is no empty data, so I just leave it as it is. So um, you can just click import once you already check or uncheck what data you want to import it. All right, so this are the this will show like the data the 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 column, the column, the variable that from your import data, from your Excel, from your SPSS, from your text file. So we can see here, so there is no missing value, the uh, descriptive statistic, the mean, median, maybe the scales, the standard deviation, the kurtosis, the skewness, and even the p-value of your variable of your column. Okay, you can also play around with the, like this one is called as indicator. Like this one is, uh, you can see the indicators uh, relations, correlation, sorry. So if you want to save it, or you want to like copy paste on your report, on your um, PowerPoint, on your slide, you don't need to like select all and all that. You can just click on copy to Excel here. Then on your Excel, on your maybe your reports, you can control V or paste on your report. Okay, 
So this is uh, the example data that you have already import. So you need to go back here for you. So you can see there is an icon shows that there is an that there is a data in the created folder. So you if you want to create a model, you can just go to create model here. So there is a model, a uh, new model dialog box will be opened up. So if there is no create model words here, you can also use the same method as you want to import data just now, which is you can just go to files or this are the listed um, project that Smart PLS um, have, which is a new, uh, sorry, PLSM model or regression model or even a process model. Okay, so also the same one if you same step, you can just right click and also choose which um, model you want to create. So I just click here to create the model. And then um, for this webinar session, I will only focusing on PLSM model. This one. So the file name here is what will appear in this uh, workspace. For example, like this one, I will write it as webinar PLS SEM model. Okay, so I will click on the save. So this is what it will appear, the interface of your project will appear once you create a new model. Okay, so uh, this is the indicator section. Your the list of your variable will be appear here, and this is your canvas, and this is the properties. So before this, in Smart PLS three, the the section for your indicator here is only half of this page, right? So we can see here in Smart PLS four, um, it just focus on your indicator and canvas um side by side. Like if you have like a number of indicator here, you can just um, see it more clearly compared to Smart PLS3, which is just half of the interface. Okay, so basically this is just a new interface for Smart PLS4. Um, it changed its color, it like more colorful and all that. Okay. So basically, um, on this session, I will focus on the PLSM as I mentioned before. So basically, um, Smart PLS is for you to project your model, for you to create like, uh, it's, not, it's not running a model of a y equal to mx plus c. So it will, it will project like a graphic visual. Okay, so first thing first, for you to create the graphic visual is you have to have a latent variable. Uh, means that the main variable of um, your project. So first year, like this one, it, it glow on the select button, right? So for you to create a latent variable, you need to click on the latent variable um, icon. So in this canvas, you can create latent variable, for example, I will click here. So it will appear what name of your latent variable is. For example, like this one, I want to create like um, demo. So the first latent variable is called as demo. So if I want to create the second variable like this one, I will create as motivation. So this is the second. You can just click anywhere on this canvas for you to create a new Latin rebel. Like this one, I like incentives. So this, you can, these are the main, um, like the main variable of my project. So if, as you can see here, on if the Latin rebel is um, show, so you cannot, you cannot move your latent variable anywhere you want. So you need to click, you need to click on the select icon first for you to move your latent variable.
Okay, like this one, I want to move it like this. So it depends on your project. Okay, so basically this are uh, like your main variable, your, your, your head of your variable. So for example, like this one, I want to, I want to drag, you can, for this process, you can just drag and drop on where you want to put your column, your variable into the main variable here. Okay, for example, like this one, the first, the first um, student education here, I want to put it in the demo variable. So, see, you can just drag, for example, like this one, I just drag the second one into the demo here, okay? So for example, if you have like lots of um, the same variable that you want to put in one main variable, you can just click shift and choose the variables that you want to put into the letter. Okay, like this one, I already choose the first and second one and then I just drag and drop here. Okay, also the same goes for the intent here. I want to put it in the incentives. Okay, so if you don't want me, by default, the, the variable here will appear on the right side of the indicator here will appear on the right side of the letter. So if you want to change it from, uh, from right to left, you can also like select and then you change here. By default, the arrow will show towards the indicator. Okay, so for example, if you don't want to have like you select or all that, you can just right click on the Latin variable itself. You can align the indicators to the top or you can align the indicators to the bottom as you want. Okay, so tips here, if you want to move your variable here, you can just, um, if you just move, if you just, if you click on the one variable itself, so, so you can just uh, drag to where you want and the indicator will follow the latent one. Okay, like this one, I also want to change the indicator to the left side. This one, I want to change indicator, for example, on the bottom, like this one. Okay, so this is how you create um, the variable. So you don't, uh, the model will not read it yet. So in able for the model, for, for the PLS to read the model, you need to connect the latent here. Okay, for you to do that, you need to first click on this connect icon button here. So you can just, for example, at this one, you connect from demo to motivation or motivation to incentives. So as the previous one, you can see just now, the red color means that it does not connect to any of the variable yet. So once you connect the button, it changed to blue, right? Blue means that um, the variable, the latent is already connected to any of the variable that available on your canvas here. So for example, like this one, I also I want to connect from, like I want to find the relationship between the demo and the incentive. Also, you can do that, okay? Sorry. So if you want to make the changes or move your model, you need to select on the select icon first. So like this one, okay? So you can just move around your project here. Okay, so as you can see here, our model is um, fine and we can run for PLSM. So for you to run the PLSM, so after you have finished like connecting all the dots um, and all that, you can just click calculate here. There is an options of um, calculation that was uh, displayed that was available in Smart PLS. So you can see there is a PLS algorithm. So in this webinar session, I will just focus on the PLS algorithm here. You can just click on it 
And then um, a dialog box will open up, which like this one. Um, I just um, state as default, which I want to find a weighting between the path and the type of result I want to have just like um, the standardized one, not the mean centered or unstandardized. And the initial weight, initial weight, I will just uh, state as default other than individual. Okay. All right, so if you have made, um, you just uh, settings all that, you can just click on start calculation here, the blue button one. So this uh, just part of the output. Okay, so you can change the number here, like 0 0.9.8, uh, 0 0.907 here. Um, in this options, like in this construct, like in this construct, constructs mean that the number appear in your Latin here. Um, it appears, I want to change it to R square adjusted. So it will change automatically the R, R square adjusted on your Latin, on your variable. Okay, you can also change it as um, the AVE or the row and all that. So if you just want to leave it blank, you, there is also an option of blank here, okay? Okay, so by default, it will just appear as R squared. So uh, basically, if you just bring your mouse to the letter variable, it also have results appear here. So we can see uh, there is a converged alpha, there is a composite, uh, the root A, um, output okay so um, we can see here uh, the inner the inner model here means that this one uh, the negative 0 0.466 or 0 0.53 so this is called as inner model and this is called as outer model so if you want to change the value here you can just change it also here indirect effects if you want to have like the value here as indirect effects or f square and the outer model here you want to change it to outer loadings or outer weights also you can change here okay so basically in as smart as for you need to click a button for it to for you to see the output so the button here is called as open report which is in blue button here. So if you click on the open report here, so it will appear all the output that will generate it um, from your model that you construct from you that you generate. Okay, for example, here this one was by default is will it will appear your graphical output. So your this one. So you can change your construct value, your inner model value here or your outer model value here, okay? So this is the graphical output. For example, I want to see the R square value here. You can just click on the R square, which is in quality criteria area. Okay, so we can see the R square value and the R square adjusted is in table. So if you want to copy the table here, you can just, you don't need to like um, select this table, and then you control C and all that. In Smart Palette S4, it has a button that will help you to copy the table. So the button is called Copy to Excel here. You can click. So we can see here you can use Control V to maybe your reports, maybe to your slides and all that. You can just copy, you can just paste this table to, to the Excel to the um, reports, to your slide and all that. You can also copy this table to our software. Okay, you can just click on R here. Okay, what variable you want to name. Okay. All right, so this is just the overview here. You can just click on the overview. You can just, you can also see the visual here by bar chart. So R square bar chart or R square bar chart bar R square adjusted bar chart. Okay, so for this one, you can export 
you can export the graphic by copy chart here also the same methods as the table as the table previous so you can just copy chart you can click on the copy chart here and then uh, for you to have like uh, maybe you have a specific size or you just want to it by default by this size so you can just click export here and you can just paste it like the same one. You can paste it on your report. You can paste it on um, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, and all that. Okay. Also, if you want to change like this color, you can go to the yellow section here. There is said that you can customize this chart. You can click on the customize. And then you can see here you want to have like the customization of the chart. Okay, for you to have like the color, you can change it to yellow maybe. And then um, you want to have a grid of um, a vertical also, also. Okay, so you can just customize here and then click on the arrow here for you to uh, close the properties just now and you can just copy chat here. Okay. Is there any questions um, on the previous uh, session? All right, so I assume there is no question. So basically, um, there is quite a, a a number of difference between Smart Palace 3 and into a uh, compared to Smart Palace 4. Uh, first thing first, the difference is that um, they separate they separate the workspace between the workspace and the um, project itself between the the canvas itself. So and they change um, the interface, the colors, and um, the icon itself and how it it moves from the project into the output so they can um they have a button of copy chart copy to excel so that's the main difference between um smart PLS 3 to smart PLS 4 okay so basically you can also export your project okay so basically you can also export your project um by um maybe uh, you can export your project only to Excel. Okay, so you can click Excel here. So for example, like this one, I want to just stay as default, which it render uh, the model image. So if you want to um, exclude the large matrices in your output, also you can just tick here, but I just want to stay as default. Okay, so maybe your number format also you can change here. There is only four options of the number format here, which follows uh, US and Europe format. Okay, you can just click export here. Okay, you can just um, search or browse wherever the, um, the project of the Excel you want to save it. For example, like this one, I want to save it in this um, webinar. Okay, so you just click save, and then the Excel will be ex uh, the project will be export as Excel. Okay, so I will just um, stop sharing my screen now and I will show you the uh, the sample the how it export to Excel. Okay, so basically, this is what uh, I think it's just the same as the previous uh, version, the Smart PLS3, because you can um, browse, you can show which, um, which uh, output you want to see. You just click on this show here, right? So it will show uh, the table. Okay. So. Uh, 
So basically, your project will can be export to Excel, but in Excel, it will export only table. So basically, if you want to export graphic, you can uh, one of the option is to export to HTML. Means that um, in this Smart PLS4, the HTML will connect you to the browser. For example, like this one, uh, like I show this one, if you want to export to HTML, you can click on the HTML here and you can browse uh, wherever um, project of HTML you want to save it and then you can click save. Okay, so you can see here, it will automatically show, it, it will automatically direct your project to the browser itself. Like this one, it will automatically direct to Chrome I, because I use Chrome and um, you can see here, there is a number of output as displayed in the PLS software itself. So if you want to browse, if you want to browse the, if you want to see the visual mistake, your bar chart or all that, you can browse your folder, which you saved just now. For example, like this one, I save it as this name, job set PLSM in Chrome, which is saved as Chrome HTML document. You can open up. So this is what you can see, okay? You can see here the table, maybe the HTMT output, list of metrics here, okay, the VIF and all that. Okay, so basically, um, uh, once you once you export to HTML, there is a folder automatically added here. You can click, and there is a number of visual that. Smart PLS give you on the into the folder. Okay, you can just click or you can put it on your report and all that. So these are the listed of the graph or maybe charts of your project. Okay. So is there any questions um on Smart PLS four? Okay, so I assume there is no question. So as we can see here, uh, this is the output interface, right? So you can just go to this button back here for you to maybe like make some edit here, like, um, or anything lah. If you want to like add more variable here, maybe, um, or CC, this is just for example, or CC stat you want to add here. Okay, so it will automatically, like, it's not uh, automatically calculate it. You need to click on the calculate one if you add a new indicator into the model. Okay, so if you want to go back to the first interface, which is that the workspace, you can just click back here, or you can just save it first. And we can see here, this is the file that we created just now, right? So we can see here, this is the model and this is the data that we export just now. Okay, so 932 means that there are 932 data available that you import. Okay, so is there any questions on the software itself? Is there anyone have been using the Smart PLS3 before? Uh, 
um sorry moderation for checking for moderation Okay, all right, sorry for that. So I just explain it again. I just delete it. Okay, okay, sorry for that. So uh, the moderating means that you have a moderating variable, right, between a two variable. Right, so for you to have this is just for example for 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 this webinar. So for example, I want to create like a moderating variable here. For example, the name is moderating variable. Okay, this is just for example. So, uh, for smart pairs to recognize it is a moderating variable, it's just you can click on the moderating effect here. So, um. This is for example, so for example, you want to have a moderate thing, moderate moderation between demo and incentive. So you can click from demo to moderating variable here, and then for moderating variable here to incentives. So, um, so moderating effect here is quite different from the connect here. So if you click on moderating effect here, Smart PLS will automatically recognize that the arrow that you connect here is the middle one will be the moderating one. So if you have moderating variable here, you need to use moderating effect here. Same goes for quadratic effect. 
Okay. So for example here, I want to click, I want to put like motif here in the S, the moderating variable. So it's just, so SmartPS will recognize that this variable is a moderating variable because we use the moderating effect here to connect between demo and incentives. Okay. Oh, you can see the screen sharing. So is anyone, is everyone having the same issue as well? Okay, all right. It's okay. I will just, I will just share my screen back. Um, hi, Miss Robaisha Rahmat. Can you see my screen now? Okay, sure. So uh, she will rejoin. Is there um, uh, so Musharraf, did I answer your question just now in how to check the moderation? All right. Okay, that's good to hear. Is there any other questions before we waiting for Miss Robaisha for rejoin? Okay. This is just for example only, okay? So I'll just show the result. For example, like this moderating, I will use also the same one, the PLS as example. You can just start calculation here. If you want to change um, the value here, you can just change here or you can click on open report. So these, the, these are the example, okay? So the difference is that um, the smart PLS will recognize it, but it does not have any um, difference. So uh, the moderating effect just now is for smart PLS to recognize that it is a moderating variable for you to run the PLS same uh, model. Okay, the actually the output it's just uh, the same one. Okay. All right. So is there any other questions? So, uh, there's no book Has Miss Robaisha rejoined the re rejoin this session? Oh, I can see it. Can you see my screen? Miss Robaisha, can you see my screen? Okay, so anyone have used Smart PLS three before? So if are you if you are using Smart PLS four because this is the latest version and it just came out, I think um in last month. So there is quite a different in especially in the interface. So you can just play around and the button also is just the same one. So if you have used Smart PLS three, so um that's the only difference okay 
So, Ms. Robaisha, can you see my screen? Okay, so I'll assume that you can see my screen. Okay, so uh, the last session is where I'll just show you how to add a moderating effect. So, same goes to quadratic effect also. So, that's the difference between you connect between the uh, like a normal, like normal analysis to a, um, with the difference moderating variable was added just now. Okay, so. So if I can put it, ah, sure, sure, I will. Hi, um. This is Albert here. Uh, so for the recording, we will uh, because it takes about one time for us to to um, to be ready for that. So probably tomorrow it can be ready, and we will just uh, send the link to whoever that uh, needs it. All right. Okay, so if there is no questions further, so I think that's all for today's webinar. So thank you for joining this uh, webinar for today. Okay, so if you have any questions on the sales, you can just email to the Edward, uh, which Edward at Statworks uh, or sales at Statworks. Okay, if you have question on the technical queries, you can email to technical queries, which we already added uh, in the chat box. Okay. So that's all for today webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, before, before we uh, end the session, right, I just want to announce um, next Tuesday, we are going to have a demo session about our another product, which is Texas Instruments Financial Calculator. So for those um, lecturers that are interested to join, uh, to know more about this product, um, you may join for the next session. So we will be covering all the function, all the functionality that can be done using this uh, BA2 plus calculator. And also we will, um, mention about how we can collaborate with um, the school. Okay, so uh, for that, the link is already uh, ready. I will send to those that participate for today's session, right? Okay, and uh, I think that's all for today. And uh, wish you have a good day. Goodbye.